everyone, welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. This is Joy. For today's project, I am using the Magic Iris die on a 5x7 card base. I am using a 5x7 card base because I wanted a large ocean scene. I am going to be doing some ink blending as well as some stenciling. So let's get started. So to start off with, I am using the Magic Iris add-on. I'm going to be doing some ink blending on this as well as on the 5x7 background. This is a great add-on for a full scene and the Magic Iris is behind this base. So there is my 5x7 card base and I'm just going to center that Magic Iris add-on die cut piece right in the center and I'm just going to use some low tack tape to hold that in place. I will be doing some ink blending, some stenciling, and so I want this whole scene to be seamless. So even though this will be popped up later, this magic iris add-on will be popped up, it still will be a seamless inked and stencil scene. So again, I'm just taping this down, and then we're gonna be using some stencils. The stencils that I'm using are hill, the hillside stencils, but I'm going to be using them for waves instead of grassy hills. So I have got them placed upside down, basically, and I'm holding them in place uh, with some magnets, and I'm starting some ink blending. This color that I'm using is Peacock Feathers Distress Oxide Ink, and I'm inking at the top part of the waves. I did add on a second um, stencil piece next to it because again, this is a five by seven card, so it's bigger than the stencils. So I just lined the stencils up together and I'm making the top part of the waves. Then I'm going to come in with the next color, which is Mermaid Lagoon. And I'm going to move these stencils down and I'm going to have a second set of waves. And I'm just going to blend this till I get a nice color that I want. I love these two ink colors. I think they're fantastic for ocean waves. So once that's all done, you can see now we've got these beautiful waves and I'm coming back in with the Mermaid Lagoon and just kind of blending that where the two colors meet. Now I am flipping those stencils back over and using them as a mask. And then I have a white piece of paper at the top and I'm just using that for a straight line guide. You also could use some low tack tape. And I'm coming with, in with Distress Oxide ink in Antique Linen. I love antique linen and uh, gathered twigs together for sand. I think it makes the perfect color. So now I'm gonna come in with the um, gathered twigs and add just a darker part of the sand where it's meeting the water. And then I'm gonna blend those two together. And again, I'm just using this white piece of paper as a mask. Again, you could use low tack tape. So now I'm just gonna blend those two colors together. And that turned out beautiful. Now I'm coming in with squeezed lemonade and then picked raspberry. And as the two blend, we are going to get this really beautiful orange. This to me just felt like this needed to be kind of a sunset sky. This card is so colorful. And then when you get all those really cute lawn fawn critters, they're just darling. So just keep blending until you get the color that you want. I really didn't need to mask off anything here because it was a straight line and everything is blending wonderfully. Again, I'm just keeping that die cut magic iris add-on in place on the five by seven card so you can see that it's a seamless blend. I just use the stencils as a mask and I'm spritzing some water onto the waves and just patting it dry with a paper towel to give it some water effect. Isn't that pretty? Okay, on another piece of cardstock, I am using gathered twigs and I'm just inking it up and I'm going to be cutting out the palm tree um, trunks and this is out of the hammock and trees die and then I'm once those are die cut I'm going to take a little bit of walnut stain and just ink around the edges just to give a little bit of dimension and character to these trees. 
And then I die cut um, the palm tree fronds from Hammock and Trees out of Noble Fur cardstock. And I'm coming in with Lucky Clover and just adding a few little highlights to each one of, of the palm leaves. Again, for a little bit more dimension. Now here are the cute critters that are the star of this card. And this is from Critters in the Sea. I've got the stamps and the die. And I am coloring them with Copic markers. And for the dolphin, it is T1, T3, T5, and T7. Lawn Fawn's Jet Black ink is Copic friendly, so perfect for Copic coloring. I started with the T1 underneath the dolphin's belly. And then I came in with T3 and colored the rest of the dolphin. I used T7 for the darker parts and then T5, kind of the mid-grade color, you know, the medium color, and then blended it all out again with that T3, leaving the belly still very light with the T1. I think this color combination is absolutely perfect for dolphins. And isn't he just a cute, cute little critter? I love how he turned out. I also used a little bit of R20 on his cheeks. Now for this little cute turtle. We are using YG21, 25, and 17, and then E57 and E55. I was Googling what really sea turtles look like, and they really have actually a lot of brown on them. So I'm just doing this green base basically on his body and in between those larger spots on his shell adding a little bit of green to the shell, and then I'm going to come in with the E55 and 57 on those larger spots because they're kind of a greenish brown color. And so I really do love the way he turned out and he is such a cute little guy. So again, just laying down my light color, coming in with my dark to add shadow, blending out with my medium color, really super simple. Now for this little seahorse, I am using um, R20 for the belly, V15 for the face and kind of down the body, and then BG13 and BG18 for the little spiky part on him. And I just thought, what a colorful, fun seahorse. I don't really think seahorses are this colorful in real life, but in my world, they are. And then these cute little fish, B97 and B99. Now I did end up coloring um, three more fish and adding it to the card um, off camera after I was all done, before I took pictures. You guys will see those in the pictures. Um, I just felt like I needed some more fish and I just ended up using the teals and the purples, um, the same color combos that I've used here. So R05, R46 for the crab's body and R20 and V15 for his cute little shell. Now I'm using the coordinating dies and I'm using some low tech tape to tape those in place. And then I'm gonna run that through my die cut machine and we'll have these really adorable images. Okay, on to the magic iris die. So I've cut three of the circles in the regular magic iris. Here's that little flux capacitor piece and I'm going to tape that down in the center of one of these die cut circles and run that through my die cut machine. Now that that's done, when you take this off, you're going to have three open slots and three little guidelines on this circle. This is where we're going to put in the three sausage pieces that I've already die cut. And we're going to slide them in at the top of that first hole and then push it down to the bottom. We're gonna to go to the next one and do the exact same thing. You're going to put it in, push it down to the bottom. This makes sure everything lines up nicely. Lat one last time, put it in, push it down to the bottom. Now we're gonna line these little sausage pieces up and you can see in the center there when everything is lined up, you have this nice circle. Then we're gonna take these little glue dots, um, like the 3 sixteenths, the really small, glue dots. And on those sausage pieces, on each one of those end pieces, there's a little X marks the spot. And that is where we are going to apply these tiny, small glue dots. So I'm just going to take, I'm just using my, my scissors because it's kind of the easiest way to pick them up. 
And again, I'm going to place this down one on each little X. Again, there's an X on each little sausage piece. And so I'm just going to apply these glue dots. And really this is the size you guys need. There is a purpose. <laughs> last one, putting it onto that last little sausage piece. And then I'm gonna make sure everything is lined up again. Once it's all lined up and the center circle is, you know, perfectly round, basically, I'm gonna hold that down and I'm going to take the a second die cut circle. Remember, we cut out three at the beginning and I'm going to line that up and lay it down and push down on those three spots that have the adhesive. Perfect. Once that's all done, we're going to flip it over and you can see that those are three like little um, registration marks, I guess I would call it. You're going to take a tape runner and do one strip of glue starting there and going out to the outside edge of this circle. Because we die cut three of these little stabilizer pieces and each little piece has this little curve and it lines up perfectly with the inside circle. We're gonna go all the way to the inside edge with this and line it up where we put our adhesive. And we're gonna do that for each one, for a total of three. Again, line up that little curved edge to the inside curve of this circle. And push that down onto the adhesive. And then we're going to do the last one. And these are the stabilizers. These all come in the magic iris die. Okay, now that we've flipped it over, now we've got the tab. This is the tab that you're gonna be moving around to open and close. So you have a stabilizer piece facing towards you. This has the same little curve that lines up in the center and you're gonna have a little V right where I'm pointing. That's how you want your, um, tab piece to be, to stick next to that stabilizer piece. Put a little bit of adhesive, line that up in the center, line it up with that tab, and you have a nice little V. Now you're going to take that third circle piece and just set it on top. We're not adding any adhesive, making sure everything is lined up. Now we will add some more adhesive to those three stabilizers. Once that's done, we're going to hug around this piece, not super tight, just naturally have it fold over. And you'll kind of notice that it definitely should not reach to the inner circle. If it does, it's too tight. So just fold it nice and loose and wherever it lands is perfect as long as it's not too far in. As you can see there, all those pieces are really good. I did have to adjust one piece because my circle was just a little bit I just slid a little bit over so pushing that down again and now you've got this magic iris die that works isn't that wonderful now flip it over and just fold those little tabs in just so they're not sticking out and now you've got this working magic iris die I just think this thing is so magical and so wonderful Okay, so in the Magic Iris add-on, you've got this little piece here that's gonna show the recipient to um, pull here. So I'm going to glue that down with some liquid glue. And now you'll see that little piece that's behind it, that little white piece, we're just gonna trim that off because we do not need to see that piece. And once it's behind this add-on piece, you can see it's just nice and flush. It is perfect. And I just inked it up to match the night sky. Now I'm drawing a light pencil line on the inside when this magic iris die is closed because I want this to have a seamless look. So it needs to match the front of the card. So I need to add a little bit of the yellow part of the sky and a little bit of the sun. I am just lining up a piece of cardstock where that little light pencil line was using the mini ink blending tools and getting it nice and color just taking my eraser and getting that pencil off there and then we're going to add the sand to it 
So again, just using my piece of cardstock. And at this point, it doesn't matter because you, it doesn't matter if you get the ink on the outside circles because you're not going to be seeing it anyways. So again, adding the sand, I am using antique linen for the sand along with some gathered twigs. And it was squeezed lemonade that I used for the yellow. Adding that in, blending it out. I will line it up with that front card base to make sure everything is cohesive and it looks like everything matches up. Just finishing, getting all the little touches done nice. Okay, that looks great. So now you add adhesive to the top, the whole top of that magic iris die. You line it up in the center and you line up that pull tab at the top. Make sure everything is good and level. Now we're going to add some adhesive only to the stabilizer pieces on the back. Then we will add some foam squares to the card around it, just in the corners and in the center between those corner pieces because you don't want any foam tape being in the way when you open up your magic iris die. Now I'm going to line it up on my five by seven card base and we've got this seamless inked and stenciled background. All right, time to add all these fun critters. First, I'm gonna stamp the sentiment and I stamped um, the cute sentiment that says, just wave and hello. And I inked it up with both gathered twigs and walnut stain and I did it on the sand. I kind of wanted it to feel like it was part of the sand, like somebody wrote it in the sand. I did off camera color another dolphin. Um, actually, this was the dolphin that I colored in. The other dolphin, I was trying something different. The dolphin was going to be in the center here. It just didn't look right, so we ended up putting this cute little turtle in the center. So that other dolphin that I have, I'm going to be putting him onto this card. We're gluing down all the fish. And like I said earlier, I did end up adding three more fish, which you will see in the pictures because I felt like we just needed a little more sea life. Just using the glue tube to add those down, using some foam tape and things like that behind the dolphin. So now here are those uh, palm tree leaves and the cute little um, coconuts that I die cut out of that same inked gathered twigs. What I am doing is taking two of the palm tree fronds and they there's two die cuts and one goes one way with the palm fronds and one goes another way. I am using the opposites of each other and stacking them on top of each other to give a really full palm tree look. I'm gonna glue down the palm tree trunks, adding the cute palm fronds. And once everything is glued down, I will um, trim off all the excess just using my tweezers making sure that that palm frond is not in the way when you open up the magic iris die gluing down this second or excuse me third palm tree I ended up doing a fourth palm tree and so it's going to be on this left side and you can see that other little dolphin right there. We glued him on. So I felt like we needed two, two little dolphins. So basically, to me, it looks like the dolphins are saying hi to the turtle when you open up, when the turtle comes up onto the ocean. And you've got that cute little crab saying hi to all the cute little fish. And I love how that turned out. These little critters, critters are just darling. Gluing down that crab, making sure that's where I wanted him to be. Now I'm going in to add some detail. I am using a black glaze pen and I'm gonna add detail to the eyes. I like the way that it pops. And then I'm going to add those little holes that are in um, the coconuts. And I'm using that with the black glaze pen. I really do like the shine of the glaze pen. And then I'm gonna come in with a white gel pen and we will add some, some little uh, shiny lines basically to all these little critters, a little bit to the dolphins. I'm doing really light handed. Sometimes I'm pretty heavy handed with it, but this one I kept pretty light. Um, so on the little fish, on the dolphin, on the turtle, 
I did add some little uh, freckly cheeks to the cute um, seahorse. I did add the R20 marker to the cheeks of the dolphin because they are pretty dang cute. Now I'm going to add some white gel pen to the trunks of the trees. And I'm also going to add some white gel pen just a little bit to the palm fronds. Now I'm taking the Copic marker and E57 and adding a few little dots in the sand. I, I like to add this. It gives the sand dimension and texture, and I think it um, really adds some interest to your card. So I'm going to finish that up. Here I'm adding a little bit of the highlights to the palm fronds. At first I wasn't sure if I was going to, but I felt like it just needed a little bit. So I'm just going to finish that up. Nice little details. Makes all the difference. Now that the card is done, you can see how cute this scene is together. Um, so much fun when you open up this magic iris die to see that really cute turtle on the inside. Um, I just love all the little sea ocean critters. They are so much fun. They're saying hi to one another. It's a really fun, bright, summery card. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.